I'm Professor Rainer Arnold, University of Regensburg in Germany. I want to speak today, this means to make a contribution on the subject, is constitutional law relevant for outer space? Some considerations. First of all, I want to express my gratitude to Professor Vasco Pereira da Silva, my friend and highly respected colleague for the invitation to contribute to the important review of ELPIS. Outer space, the largely unknown entity, is in urgent need of legal regulation. International legal conventions exist. For example, the 1969 Outer Space Treaty, the key text on space law, further the Moon Treaty and others, but they are not sufficient. International treaties do not exist for all important areas of space activities, even not for the more and more increasing activities as for example, for the recently picking up speed space tourism. It is evident that space law must be extended to national dimensions. The Outer Space Treaty presupposes this, as we can see from its Article 6 concerning space activities of private persons, providing the obligation that the state must authorize and adequately supervise these activities. So national space laws are indispensable. Germany, and I speak for Germany here as an example uh, from my home country, Germany has not yet enacted a space law. So discussion is well advanced, but there is still some disagreement on several issues. This leads to our main question. One category of law has not yet been adequately addressed in this context, constitutional law. Space activities are carried out by states or groups of states, organizations, or by private individuals. Are they obliged to observe national constitutional law? The internal law, especially the constitutional law binds these actors. This is a perspective from inside the state. Does this apply when, even if the activity takes place in space, not on the territory of the state, as well as not in its airspace, which belongs to the territory? These activities are carried out by people, either on behalf of the state, that is by public officials, or by private people, people from private companies in space tourism, for example. The freedom rights of people can be affected in connection with space activities by people of the state concerned, but also by people of other states. So the question arises, do the fundamental rights of the national constitution apply in their subjective defensive function against space relevant encroachments on the liberties of persons? And further the question arises in particular, does the duty of protection of the state resulting from the fundamental rights also apply to activities in outer space. This question will be examined as far as it is possible in this limited time I have at my disposal, will be examined on the basis of German law, the law of my country. This is also of interest because the recent case law of the German Federal Constitutional Court has dealt with the issue of extraterritoriality of fundamental rights. Particularly stimulating was the decision 
of the Federal Constitutional Court in March 2021 on the Climate Protection Act, which addressed such issues, of course, not related to outer space, but to countries far away from Germany. It was about how it was to be assessed constitutionally if such countries far away from Germany were affected by climate damaging impacts due to actions or omissions of German officials. The Federal Constitutional Court has not yet dealt substantially with cases involving outer space. In the literature, only one case is repeatedly cited to emphasize that the issue of outer space and national constitutional law has hardly ever been considered so far. This case was a constitutional complaint to the Federal Constitutional Court which was not admitted to the court for a substantive decision. It concerned the participation of Germany in a research flight to the planet Saturn on behalf of ECOC, um, GmbH, Darmstadt, European Space Operations Center, and NASA, the United States Space Agency, in which plutonium was used. The complainants, two school children, invoked the danger to health and life when the rocket launches or re-enters the Earth's atmosphere, causing plutonium to escape. The Federal Constitutional Court, in a brief justification of the rejection of this constitutional complaint, examined the concept of the duty to protect, but also gave indications which would have been relevant for the attribution of responsibility to Germany. The launch was to be attributed to NASA, since the launch vehicle and the spacecraft were provided by NASA, by NASA, the launch was to take place from American territory and the flight was to be controlled and monitored by the ground control station in United States. Therefore, there is, as the Constitutional Federal Constitutional Court says, there is no act of the German public authority. Therefore, the constitutional complaint could not be admitted. In order to answer the question whether the Constitution, especially the basic rights, also apply in space, in outer space, a look must be taken at the basic rights system of Germany, of the Constitution, the Grundgesetz, the basic law. Fundamental rights, basic rights, are formally defined in Germany. Those rights which are named in Article 1 to 19 of the Basic Law of the Grundgesetz are understood as subjective rights and are uh, their natural defense rights against interventions of the state. At the same time, however, they are also objectified, forming a coherent objective order of values with human dignity at the top, connected with the general right to freedom, as enshrined in Article 2, Paragraph 1 of the uh, Grundgesetz. The individual fundamental rights are specifications of a written nature, while unwritten rights to liberty are derived from the general right to freedom. One example is the numerous manifestation of the right of personality. The theory of the duty to protect in German, it is Schutzpflicht, was developed, by, uh, was developed from the objective value character of the fundamental rights 
by the jurisdiction of the Federal Constitutional Court already about 40 years ago. The state may not inadmissibly interfere with the freedom of the individual, but in addition, it must actively protect the freedom of the individual. In particular, it is obliged, the state is obliged to enact laws that sufficiently protect the areas of freedom so that violations of fundamental rights are avoided. Such laws primarily provide for procedural rules, determine restrictions on content, provide for reservations of approval, and establish rules under organizational law. The violation of the duty to protect by the state can be challenged by the individual with a constitutional complaint. It should be noted, however, that such complaints are only successful if either the state, in this case, usually the legislature, has completely failed to provide protection, or if such protection is enshrined in law, but is clearly insufficient. The duty to protect also played a special role in the aforementioned decision of the Federal Constitutional Court on the Climate Protection Act. We also want to take a look at the space environmental law, because in this area, we want to point out the constitutional implications in a special way. Thereby, only selected points can be discussed, and this only very briefly. The first, first question of interest is whether the fundamental rights of the national constitution are applicable only within the territory of the state of Germany. The answer is for Germany, the answer is clear, no. In fact, it depends on the persons acting as article one, paragraph three of the basic law of the Grundgesetz clearly states. As soon as it is a German functionary, his actions or her actions or omissions violate fundamental rights, namely those of the German constitution, even if the violation does not take place on the territory of Germany, but on the territory of another state or on the high seas, or even, I must say, in the outer space. Under German law, a distinction must be made between human rights and German rights, rights which are attributed only to German citizens. The latter, these German rights formally extended for to European Union citizens for avoiding discrimination. Um, when private persons, for example, companies, um, that means non-state functioners, interfere with the freedom of the individual, they also violate the fundamental rights of the individual. Not only the state, but also private persons have to respect fundamental rights, which can be realized by interpreting the civil law norms applicable to private persons in the light of fundamental rights. This is therefore an indirect effect of fundamental rights known as indirect third party effect or with a German word, which is often used also in literature of foreign uh, countries, Drittwirkung, indirect Drittwirkung. In Germany, there is no subjective right to environmental protection in the federal constitution. Otherwise, for example, in Article 141, Paragraph 3 of the Barbarian State Constitution. If the uh, environmentally harmful behavior of officials causes damage to the health or even the life of persons, this means a violation of Article 2, Paragraph 2 of the Basic Law, that is, the right to health 
and life. It is somewhat more complicated to determine the criteria for triggering the duty to protect. We must say that there are two dimensions for protection of uh, fundamental and human rights in the German constitution, which uh, are connected one to the other. The one is that the state interferes actively or by, um, well, act actively into the uh, sphere of liberty and violates by this the fundamental rights. The state has to, um, to um, let's say, to restrict from doing so. But the second uh, element is that uh, objectively the state must actively promote and protect the right. Um, the duty of the state to protect the freedom of the individual is a consequence of the objective value character of fundamental rights. This is why the duty to protect is also called the objective duty to protect. However, this so-called objective duty is sub subjectivized insofar as the individual can assert it in court and can also file a constitutional complaint with the federal constitutional court for violation of this duty to protect. The scope of such a complaint is in general the enactment of a law which would sufficiently protect the individual from the encroachment on the individual's freedom. Such a possibility for the individual to achieve um, the enactment of a piece of legislation is something extraordinary, something atypical. This is also the reason why, on the basis of the duty to protect, action by the legislature can only be enforced by the courts if, in the case of an obvious serious threat to fundamental rights, um, it is considered indispensable for the legislator to intervene. In this context, the legislation itself understandably has further leeway to shape its own law. A specific content of a law cannot be enforced in detail via a lawsuit based on the concept of the duty to protect. For reasons of separation of powers, the legislator later must determine the form of the law itself. However, it depends on the functional aspects. The legislator must design the law in such a way that it is also effectively, that it also effectively eliminates the threat to fundamental rights and as far as possible, exclude a violation of fundamental rights. This functional goal is therefore decisive, not the concrete content of the law. If the legislator, uh, has already enacted a law that is, has taken action, an action based on the duty to protect will hardly be successful. Only if the objective of protection, that is the avoidance of violations of rights is clearly not achievable in any way by this law, can such an action be successful. We thus see that a claim against the legislation against the legislature to efficiently protect fundamental rights by law can only lead to success in exceptional cases. Nevertheless, such a possibility of action is of great importance, especially in environmental law. It should also be mentioned that it is not only a claim against the legislator to protect fundamental rights by law, but also against the other state authorities for actions for example, for the issuing of administrative acts as for a, or for a certain government action, for example, a claim for the exercise of diplomatic protection by the government in the case of a concrete serious violation of fundamental rights against one of the nationals by a foreign state. So let us summarize uh, once again, the state must protect the fundamental rights of the individual. This is done by not interfering with fundamental rights in an inadmissible way. 
but it is it also does so by actively protecting fundamental rights. It can uh, do this above all by enacting laws that contain provisions which have the effect of protecting fundamental rights. The concept of the duty to protect fundamental rights gives the individuals a possibility to assert before a court, ultimately before the federal constitutional court, that a law has to be had to be accept, um, enacted in order to protect a certain fundamental right. The fundamental right, for example, to life and health would be violated if the state did not adequately protect it through its laws. However, it should be emphasized once again that such a claim is limited um, in its content. On the other hand, it can be enforced if the legislator has remained inactive, totally inactive at all. And on the other hand, if the legislator has become uh, active by adopting a law, but the result of its activity used in an obvious manner does not offer legal protection in any respect. The following question arises in our context. Who can assert the duty to protect vis-a-vis -vis the German legislature? Only the German? A foreigner, a foreigner who is in Germany, or also a foreigner who is abroad, in which case can such a duty to protect be asserted? The basic rights of the basic law of our Grundgesetz um, are available to all people, even outside Germany. It should be mentioned that a few basic rights are reserved for Germans, such as a freedom for assembly, freedom of association, freedom of uh, professional occupation, freedom of movement within the federal territory. They, these rights can only be claimed by Germans. However, the basic rights holders have also been extended to European Union citizens. For non-European Union citizens, however, there is always the possibility of invoking the general right to freedom under Article 2, Paragraph 1 of the Basic Law. Constitutional jurisprudence has increasingly opened up to the idea of the extraterritorial validity of fundamental rights. This applies both to the subjective dimension of fundamental rights and to their objective dimension with which the duty to protect is associated. In the first category, the criterion of direct and individual violation of the person who wants to assert his or her violation of fundamental rights by means of a constitutional complaint after exhaustion of the legal remedies is important. Thus, in the climate protection decision, the federal constitutional court also granted residents of Nepal and other distant countries standing to sue for a possible violation of any right to life and health caused by environmental damage. Even if the constitution complaint had no success on the merits in this respect, the admiss admissibility of persons from other countries to file a constitutional complaint is remarkable and in line also with dogmatics. In the second category, the category of the duty to protect, the criterion for determining the conditions under which persons from Germany or abroad can invoke the duty to protect um, uh, guarantees is more difficult to determine. A case decided by the Federal Administrative Court, but pending before the Federal Constitutional Court at the moment, illustrates this difficulty. The United States military direct signals for combat, combat drones from the United States of America to Rammstein in Germany, a military base of the US Air Force. From there, the signals are forwarded for the use of the drone in another country. Residents of that other country are trying to claim violations of their right to life and health by these military actions through constitutional complaints to the German Federal Constitutional Court based on the duty to protect, um, uh, uh, to, to protect. Uh, yes, in terms of content. It is possible, as these rights are available to all people, 
in Article 2, Paragraph 2 of the Basic Law, not only to German nationals. What is relevant for the assertion, however, is that Germany, by virtue of the fact that Rammstein is located on its territory and the military base is authorized by Germany, in order to assert the duty to protect, there must therefore be sufficient connection with the state, that means Germany, against which the duty to protect is asserted. As far as space law is concerned, we can identify various such possibilities of connection with the state, in this specific case with Germany. If the state now launches a space object, this is a term introduced by the uh, Outer Space Treaty, this state is liable under the Outer Space Treaty Article 7 for all damage caused as a, by the, uh, the space object, as well as for environmental damage. This is a liability under international law towards the other contracting states, which today are already over 100. However, this determination under international law also means sufficient connection for the assertion of a claim for protection under fundamental rights of Germany. The same must apply if the space object is launched from the territory of the state or from its installations. Moreover, this also applies if the state itself does not carry out the launch and then the care of the space stay, but a private person, but the state enables him her to do so. Registration in a state party to the Outer Space Treaty, i.e. in Germany, in accordance with Article 8, is also such a connection which entitles the holder to assert a claim for protection of fundamental rights against a registering state. This state in which this object is uh, registered has sovereignty and control over the space object, over the entire crew and over their stay in space. It is clear that Germany's participation in a space mission would also trigger the claim for protection. In summary, it can be said, first, the environment to be protected is also the environment of space and on celestial uh, bodies. The connection with the Earth's environment seems evident, as we know from various phenomena of nature. The state constitution contains various mechanisms that are suitable for the protection of the environment. The concept of the environment in the National constitutions, also in the German basic law, is a comprehensive concept, rather containing and uh, integrating its environment and the space environment together. The state objective of Article 20A of our basic law to secure the nature, natural foundations of human life for future generations cannot ignore the environment of outer space. Second, constitutional law applies in our context without geographical boundaries. In particular, fundamental rights are extraterritorially, extraterritorially applicable. So the, the, the traditional instruments and uh, mechanisms are also applicable to processes that take place in outer space. The scope of application of the basic law is not limited to Germany insofar as it is committed to human rights and also standardizes important basic and human rights as a fundamental rights of the constitution. Human rights are universal and refer to human beings, regardless of whether they are on earth, in the air or in outer space. Human beings are the reference point of the constitution. Through the, through the human being, the national constitution also applies in other countries and even in outer space. If a person's fundamental rights are violated, uh, either by the state in question or with cooperation or acquiescence, the constitutional scope uh, of application opens up. The same consequences arise, arises, consequence arises in the case of dangers to the human goods protected by fundamental rights, such as life, health, property, etc which are not covered by the constitution. Here, the duty to protect, 
these goods intervenes. In this context, the geographical location, where the violation occurs or where the threat arises is also irrelevant. It should also be emphasized that private individuals, for example, companies are also obliged to respect fundamental rights. This arises either directly or as in Germany, indirectly. So norms of conduct under civil law must be interpreted in such a way that they correspond to fundamental rights. This means that private companies are also obliged to behave in accordance with their constitutional obligations, even during activities in outer space. Space is therefore not a constitution-free area. People are the bearers of fundamental rights, even if they are outside their national territory, regardless of where. 